Hello, this is a video on using the iPad application Teamosity. As you see, when you click on the icon, it opens with an introduction to explain to you about the differences in um, sort of the way people behave and why that's valuable and useful to understand, especially when you're working with and leading a team. If you want to create a new account, you have an instruction, create a new account. And you will be asked to enter an account name. And so why don't we just call this account um, test1. And we'll put an, <clears throat> an email in. info at team intelligent dot com and then we are asked to enter a pin number the pin number is your secure number it means that you have set up a separate account and when you hit create account you now have entered uh, a special account to start putting in teams. Now, we put a, a team in for you to test and play with. So as you can see, there's some people already entered um, into the sort of uh, set of individuals. Um, and you'll notice over on the far right side, there's add a person. And so when we add a person, we're asked to identify who the person is and we'll call this test and we'll say P1 for person 1 you would be you would put a person's name but uh, for our purposes just to illustrate how this how this plays out and then you're asked to estimate some things about the person's personality now you can if you already know uh, what their personality type is, you can enter that. If they're willing to take the questionnaire or survey, you click on survey. Or if you know the person well enough and you think about their behavior, how they've behaved around you, you can take a look at the descriptors and you can start saying, well, yes, this person I have seen to be pretty talkative and pretty active in discussing things. And so and next and yes this person has lots of novel ideas and innovates a lot and is pretty imaginative um, and yes this person likes to be analytical and logical and the way he or she gets things done and they are pretty um, open-ended around things they like to have things uh, uh, just sort of occur and emerge and so now we have um, estimated a person's type, ENTP in this case. And then the screen immediately gives you several options. <clears throat> you, you see here an option where the individual's type preferences identify uh, what it is that they are most likely to be like and most likely to do um, based on how uh, we answered the questionnaire. You get to see some descriptors of the things that they tend to be pulled toward in various behaviors. You might also take a look at typological processes, in which case you can see what the person does first, what the person seems to do second, and what that tends to mean in their behavior. Now, we have an also an, a, a piece that says relationosity. And that means everybody in the database compared to this person, how close or how far are they likely to be in a relationship. You can also click on the down menu and say, I just want this to be uh, not for everybody, but I want it to be for the select team. And once you do it with the select team, the numbers change. Uh, the number of people who are in the circle um, within the team and how close they are to the individual that we just entered. Well, we might also do some analytical things. Let's say we wanted to identify the typical strengths of our ENTP. We can look and see what those typical strengths are. What might be their typical time to 
getting things done. There's some descriptors that are helpful. Um, I might even think about how they typically work on a team and what are the things I might see in their particular team behavior. So I have all of these options now that I've entered in this information, but let's, let's go back to uh, our team. And we know that the team uh, has, our, our play team, has uh, seven people in it. And I can begin to look at the relationship of the seven people. Their initials are entered in the circle. Um, and I can see, you know, how many people are tending to use certain kinds of processes. Um, I can see uh, how many people are grouped together around different typological patterns. I can also look at the kind of relationships they're likely to have. They're graphed according to some degrees of dysfunction and accommodation. And once uh, we do that, we can see um, how many are really going to be individuals who um, have naturally inclined to have more constructive collaboration. If I tap on it, I can see who those people are. And if I tap on the pair, I can get tips so that when I take a look at this ENTP responding to the ENTJ, there's some particular tips for that ENTP to be mindful. And if I were going to coach Susan, for example, to deal with Randall in marketing, there are some particular tips that Randall uh, should know um, from the ES ENTJ perspective. And so now I have these, these actionable tips to help me make sure that if I have a problem in a relationship, I can what I can do to improve it. So here's some pairs of likely problems, and I can begin to look at the tips of suggestions. Uh, I might coach uh, Ahmad, who's ESFJ, in working with Randall ENTP, or if I was coaching Randall, or if they had their own application, they could go and look and see um, how that might play out for them. Now, also in the application, <clears throat> there's a uh, behind-the-scenes calculation that says, given these particular individuals and their types, um, which sort of team type likely will show up? And so there's a calculation of a dominant team type and a minority team type. And when you're taking a look at that, you can see what are the likely um, sort of uh, behaviors of a dominant team um, that, that has this sort of uh, typical style, what are the things that the team is likely to do? Now, there are times when you want to simulate. Well, what happens, um, and you hit the simulate button uh, up in the upper right-hand corner, what happens if uh, I, I'm going to add another type? And so when I click on that, I get a chance, and I say, well, what if I add an ESFJ? What is the ESFJ likely to contribute and I see a variety of things the ESFJ is likely to do. Um, and that might be useful to me as I think about the team and the kinds of things I want to encourage uh, the team to do. It could also be that I'm thinking about who might I want to add or what, what, I, what I might want to encourage the team to do behavior-wise. <clears throat> and if I click on fill an opening, um, and I go, well, I need this team to be more collaborative I need less conflict and more trust. Well, the system calculates what are the type patterns that are likely to make that kind of contribution. Now, you, you could think, well, if I hired that INFJ, is that necessarily going to do those things? Now, chances are an INFJ behavior pattern will make those contributions. Equally important, though, is you could go look up ENF, uh, INFJs and look at the kinds of behaviors INFJs engage in and encourage the team uh, to do that. <clears throat> so as you can see, there are graphical options, analytical options, fill an opening, recommend manager options, and simu uh, simulate addition um, within uh, all of your choices. The analysis options that gives you 20 ways to understand different behavior patterns from everything how to develop to what about the typical roles um, that these sort of type patterns tend to play out on the team. You can see the whole team spread out for you on the typical pattern. So, Teamosity gives you all kinds of tools for uh, thinking about um, how to enrich team performance 
how to analyze team performance. Uh, you can even do things like if you wanted to study a specific type, uh, you click on specific type, study specific type. There's some get started recommendations, some tips. Some tips that when you click on it, um, you can get some uh, a menu of options and choices so you know how to add a person, add a team, all those kinds of things. Um, and uh, as suggested to you, if you wanted to um, add as many teams as you'd like, there's the add a team button. As many people as you'd like, um, add a person button. So this was sort of the made up for this particular video. If I take you back to the beginning um, and I want to log in as a different uh, team to get started, I'm going to come into my, my standard account so you can see. Um, I have lots of teams here that I have been working with and what we've done is everybody on the team has the application and we project it up on the screen and um, we we use it as a way of um, for example um, this particular team uh, has a series of uh, a total of six people we see where the team's strengths are in terms of the numbers of people who are doing uh, different things we have uh, various psychological processes we see are heavily weighted, some things ignored, which could be a very useful discussion. We have a variety of pairs that go from pretty constructive to somewhat difficult relationships, and we've used this to have candid conversation about what to do to improve um, our relationship, and we've used the tips to talk about how we can um, enhance our connection to one another in the team. We've, we've also used the analysis options in different team meetings just to talk about what would it mean um, if, in fact, these typical roles uh, are played out on the team given the strengths and weaknesses within each of those roles. But this is just an example. As I said when I started, I wanted to orient you to the uh, Teamosity application. 